Hi. Welcome to Prime Recap. A brave seal decides to fight against the laws of nature and eliminate the ferocious sharks that threaten the survival of his group. Today we will recap the story of the movie, SEAL Team, from 2021. The Hunef team consisting of a dolphin and two military SEALs, is at Cape Storm with a mission to help the Navy disarm the X-47 death balloon. Realizing the complexity of the mission, Switch decides to call in a human to help them, but Sergeant Claggart claims to be able to succeed in that challenge. To disarm the bomb, he needs to cut one of the wires, and then the trio takes the balloon to the Navy ship. Minutes later, they begin to hear a strange noise and the crew realizes that the X-47 is going to explode. Now all that is left to do is to run away so as not to be hit. Immediately, the ship is destroyed and Dolph falls into the water. Just beyond, the ship crashes against the rocks and, on impact, the two seals are thrown into the sea. During the fall, Claggart ends up losing his navy necklace, which sinks and is lost in the depths of the ocean. Some years later, Quinn and Benji devise a strategy to capture their meal. The plan is to use a surprise attack, but the little fish soon notices the presence of the predators and manages to escape. The animal swims quickly off the reef and Quinn goes after it, but is stopped by his friend. Benji warns him about the danger of being eaten by a shark and Geraldo overhears the conversation. The seal says he is the bravest seal in the ocean and claims that sharks pose no danger to him, having once managed to escape from an aquarium using only him keen intelligence. Despite Benji's advice, Quinn decides to take a chance and swims out into the open ocean in search of the fish that escaped. However, the only thing he finds is an ancient necklace. While holding the object in his fins, Quinn sees the reflection of a great white shark approaching and the two friends are paralyzed with fear. Upon being approached by the predator, they quickly flee and soon realize that they are being chased by two sharks instead of just one. After a quick swim, Quinn manages to lose them, but realizes that Benji is surrounded and returns to help his partner. The duo has nowhere else to run, as their enemies have split up to attack them, so Quinn has the idea of using the screw spin to get rid of them. Having no other option, Benji decides to rely on this strategy and they both manage to escape unharmed by jumping onto the island. While celebrating their victory, Quinn divides the two medals he found in the ocean and makes a new necklace, giving one of them to his friend. From now on, the SEAL duo becomes a real team. Just then, a, a group of kids start playing around them and their mother appears with some barnacles to be served for dinner. Upon seeing that gruesome food, the little SEALs despair and run away. This is the only food that this community has access to lately, because they cannot go out hunting due to the risk of being devoured by sharks. Quinn is disgusted by this reality and can't wait until everyone can eat fish again. In an attempt to cheer up his gang, the old man says that it is almost time for the sardine run, and on that day everyone will be able to eat as much as they want. In the middle of the night, while his colleagues are sleeping, Benji confesses to Quinn that he is starving and hopes that they will be able to find a fish the next day. Unhappy with this situation, Quinn decides to sneak out to try his luck once again, but soon realizes that he is being followed by his friend. The SEAL then reveals his plan to investigate the small shipwrecked boats around the island in order to find human food remains. During the search, they find everything, including a chest full of gold and a warm crab, but nothing they could use to satisfy their hunger. So the duo decides to swim further out and search the wreckage of a large ship. While they investigate the place, Grimes and his henchmen show up. The creature starts chasing them and the friends use the reflection from their necklaces to blind it as they try to escape. However, the great white shark is too fast and soon catches up with them. Overcome with despair, they decide to use the screw spin again to try to lose the enemy, but Quinn soon realizes that Benji has had no luck. This time, the seal ended up being cruelly devoured, and the proof is that its necklace got caught in Grimes' sharp teeth. Devastated by the loss of his best friend, Quinn attacks the shark, and although he can't do any damage to it, he arouses its fury. The seal runs into the wreck and is pursued, but manages to escape. However, Grimes' henchmen surround him and the shark appears soon after to finish the job. What he did not imagine was that on that abandoned ship there would be a seal with great combat skills capable of defeating him. After getting rid of the predator, the animal saves Quinn, dragging him back to the island. Minutes later, the young seal is awakened by three seagulls. D kindly introduces his friends, Roger and Mayday, a bird that lives in symbiosis with a starfish. When asked why he is on that rock, Quinn remembers everything that happened and mourns the death of his friend. He tells how he only managed to survive because an old seal saved him from the shark and took his necklace when he left. When he hears the whole story, Dee soon realizes that Claggart is the hero Quinn is referring to and shows the seal how to find him. Upon noticing the young seal presence on his ship, the sergeant tries to chase him away, but Quinn is determined to learn how to fight and needs his help to do so. 
Furious, Claggart directs a few blows at the boy, and then throws him away. In this way, he believes Quinn will give up pestering him, but the young seal is determined to make him his teacher. To achieve his goal, Quinn uses the cans of sardines as bargaining chips and says that he will eat them all if Claggart refuses to train him. Touched by the seal's despair, the sergeant decides to help him and takes Quinn to see the rest of the ship. The old man tells how, many years ago, he used to serve the navy alongside his team and says that if Quinn has a reliable team, any mission is possible. Excited by the idea of putting together a group to defeat those monsters, the boy starts inventing various names for his future team and Claggart kicks him off the ship. That night, when Quinn returns to the island, he finds his friends gathered together and the old man asks where Benji is. When he hears about what has happened, he tries to ignore the fact that yet another seal has been devoured and advises the seal to have more barnacles. Furious, Quinn claims to be tired of running away and can no longer stand having to eat barnacles for fear of being hunted by sharks. The young seal wants to find a way to ensure that no other seals in his group are devoured and enlists the help of his friends. But no one there is brave enough to fight their predators, not even Crazy Steve. Disappointed, Quinn leaves and, after eating a barnacle, runs into Beth. The seal is completely obsessed with sardines and agrees to join Quinn's team with the promise that she can eat as many sardines as she wants. They then go after one more member for their team and decide to call Geraldo, who calls himself the bravest seal in the ocean, to join the group. In order to maintain his fame, Geraldo accepts the invitation, and the next day the trio goes to the ship so that Claggart can train them. Although he doubts the ability of those young men, the sergeant accepts the challenge and helps them get into fighting shape. In the days that follow, the team goes through the most terrible training sessions and accomplishes every single task without having the chance to give up. At the end of the training stage, the trio must undergo a final test, in which they will duel Bob, an inflatable shark that Claggart claims is the fiercest predator in the ocean. Despite the warning, Geraldo decides to be the first to confront him, and after a single blow, ends up getting hit by the balloon's stick, which hits him dozens of times. Beth is the second challenger and, now that she understands how Bob's attacks work, she manages to do well in the duel. However, when she believes she has already defeated her adversary, the seal gets careless and ends up being defeated. When it is Quinn's turn to take a beating, the young seal comes to the conclusion that a seal alone is no match for a shark. Therefore, they must work together. The trio then join forces to capture Bob and bind him with a rope. In this way, they manage to defeat him. That night, Claggart dreams of the day the bomb exploded and can no longer sleep. So he decides to go to the deck of the ship, where he meets Quinn. The young seal asks what happened to the Hunef team, and the sergeant tells her that after a serious accident, his group dispersed. Dolph has joined a show business in Switch, the equipment expert, has gone crazy. Upon hearing this, Quinn manages to convince Claggart to invite Switch to the team. The next morning, during their trip, the group comes across the biggest shark they have ever seen in their lives and everyone is paralyzed with fear. However, they soon discover that Dave is a peregrine shark and feeds only on plankton. After the scare, the quartet goes on their way and soon arrive at the ship where Switch lives. While crawling around, Quinn is caught by surprise and threatened with a shrimp. Upon seeing his old friend Claggart, Switch runs to hug him. The sergeant informs them that they need firepower to face sharks, but the seal reveals that he no longer has access to the Hunef's arsenal. So Switch had to improvise, using the resources around him to develop an extremely powerful biotechnology. Among the weapons he has produced are shellfish grenades, electric eel rays, pufferfish mines, the Barazooka, which is nothing more than a Barracuda missile, and his most powerful weapon, the Shrimp Gun. Switch gives his new companions some watches so that they can act in sync, and finally presents his newest project, which he has named the Octopus Suit. When the seal enters the machine, his body is surrounded by dozens of octopuses that form an armor and give him the power of invisibility. The project is still in the development stage, and Switch's biggest difficulty is being able to keep the costume stable, because the octopuses cannot stay together for very long. The next morning, with the help of the seagulls, the new Hunef team manages to detect a shark approaching the reef and begins the attack. While the target is trying to get rid of the shellfish, Switch throws an eel in his direction, short-circuiting the demented shark. Then the rest of the team manages to catch it with a rope, but the creature drags the seals through the ocean. Quinn then comes up with the idea of trapping the enemy in a shark cage and Beth uses herself as bait to lure the animal. The seal leaps out of the water and jumps into a cage that is next to a boat full of tourists. Because of her size, Beth manages to escape between the bars, but her predator is trapped and yet continues to chase her until he crashes into the rocks and is buried. Upon witnessing, for the first time, the seal's victory, Crunch and Snap are frightened and decide to inform Grimes of what has happened. 
The pair reveal that one of the seals was wearing a shiny object around his neck, and the shark soon realizes that Quinn is out for revenge for the death of his friend. Afraid that a rebellion will occur, Grimes decides to nip it in the bud and intends to eliminate the small group of seals to make an example of them. The great white shark sends his henchmen to inform all of his kind about the seal team. And the shoal gathers around Sentinel Rock, surrounding a small group of seals. Quinn and his friends are partying on the ship to celebrate their victory when they receive news that sharks are circling Seal Island. D tells that the predators were angered by the rebellion and now intend to make a massacre. Immediately, the young man plans to swim there to help his gang, but Claggart tries to stop him and says that they need a plan to act as a team. D draws a picture to illustrate the situation his friends will have to deal with. In the next eight hours the tide will rise, so the team needs to rescue the seals before the sharks can reach them. Switch reveals that he has a special formula for attracting sharks. In this way, the group will manage to lure them away from the island. However, to put this plan into practice, they need a boat, and Geraldo says that there are several boats parked in the harbor that is close to the aquarium where he lived. The seal reveals that this was the last place he saw Magnifica Jing, his one true love. Before starting the mission, the group starts to count down their watches, and at this time Geraldo realizes that instead of telling the time, his device only makes an extremely annoying noise. When they finally manage to break into the harbor, the group comes across other seals living there. The gang is led by Jing, Geraldo's ex-girlfriend, who manages to take down Claggart with a single blow. Next, the harbor seal leader attacks Geraldo and discovers that he lied to his friends about how he escaped from the aquarium. Furious, Jing says that no one will get out of there before Geraldo tells the truth, and the wimp is forced to admit that escaping from that aquarium was Jing's plan. However, when it was time to put into practice, Geraldo didn't have the courage and the girl managed to escape on her own. A few days later, he was expelled and returned to the sea, for without Magnifica Jing, his show was a complete failure. Realizing that the seal is unwilling to help them, Quinn reveals that his team is about to fight hundreds of sharks and the chance of them ending up dead is gigantic. Therefore, helping them to put their plan into practice is a way to punish Geraldo. Upon hearing this, Jing decides to cooperate and shows them the place where the keys to the ships are kept. While the rest of the team steals the keys, Beth takes the opportunity to grab the guard sandwich and the woman follows the clues to find the thief. When they see her approaching, the animals hide inside a speedboat and manage to go unnoticed, but are discovered when Geraldo's watch starts beeping. At this point, Claggart rushes to test the keys before reinforcements arrive and manages to start the game without any members of his group being captured. They quickly fly towards Sentinel Rock and release the liquid into the water in order to lure the sharks away. When the predators are no longer around, the seals that were surrounded take the opportunity to escape and return to the island. As soon as the liquid runs out, the SEAL team begins to attack the sharks before they realize their escape. When the quartet arrives on the island, a gigantic shark jumps into the speedboat and Claggart ends up losing control of the boat. At that moment, they collide and get stuck on a cluster of rocks. Quinn sees one of the fish that works for Grimes inside the speedboat and manages to capture it, only to find out that surrounding the SEAL island was just a plan to attract them. Crunch and Snap show up to watch the boat and keep the SEALs from escaping. But Quinn has the idea to use the objects that were dropped on the boat to make some puppets and keep the sharks busy while the group escapes. Geraldo and Jing stay behind to entertain them with a little show, in which they tell about their love story in the aquarium. Meanwhile, the rest of the team forces the fish to guide them to Grimes hideout, and they end up meeting up with Dave on the way. They get distracted by the giant fish and end up being found by a great white shark that starts chasing them. During the escape, Beth ends up getting caught in some seaweed and is about to be devoured when Quinn uses the shrimp gun to drop a bomb on the enemy. In the course of the show on the speedboat, the seal couple eventually reconcile and Snap asks them to kiss. However, Jing orders the sharks to look the other way and they both take advantage of this moment to escape. When the whole group is reunited, they realize that it will not be easy to approach the enemy lair, and Quinn decides to take a chance, using the octopus suit to infiltrate without being seen. In this way, he is able to attend Grimes' speech and discovers that the sharks are planning to team up for an ambush. Every year the seals go on a sardine run, and every year the sharks take advantage of this moment to make a feast, but there are always survivors. This time, however, Grimes intends to gather all the sharks together to hunt the group and eat all those seals. Terrified and afraid of being discovered, Quinn decides to leave, but the fish he has caught manages to break free and reveals his position. At that instant, the suit begins to glow, drawing the attention of all the sharks. The octopuses then separate, releasing a black ink to confuse the predators. In this way, Quinn believes he will manage to go unnoticed, but ends up being surrounded by Grimes and his gang. Just as the young seal was about to be devoured, 
Claggard appears and orders Quinn to leave. The old man knows that it will be almost impossible for the two of them to get out of that shark lair alive, so he decides to distract the demented ones while his friend escapes. Claggart hands the boy his necklace and bids him farewell. Quinn tries to follow him, but Switch and Geraldo pull him away. As soon as he returns to the ship, Quinn tells him what he has discovered and says that he needs to warn his gang about the ambush. The boy asks his friends not to follow him, because he doesn't want anyone else to get hurt because of him. However, when he arrives in the island, the seal realizes that it is too late, because everyone is already at sea waiting for the sardines to arrive. Faced with this, his only option is to return to the ship and ask his team for help in protecting the seals during the race. While the group is scheming the plan, the three seagulls appear and reveal that the sharks have disappeared. Upon hearing this, Quinn analyzes the map and soon realizes that his enemies are hiding in an abandoned ship that lies exactly on the route where the sardines pass. To get there safely, they enlist Dave's help and hide inside his gigantic mouth to avoid being seen. The SEAL team invade the ship and split up to attack their enemies. Geraldo uses his noisy watch to get the attention of a shark and traps it in one of the rooms, along with a lifeboat. Sneakily, the group swims past the abandoned ship and encounters dozens of hungry predators, who are just waiting for the right moment to devour all the seals at once. Quinn then devises a plan to trap those fish on the ship and prevent them from leaving for the hunt. When all the doors close, Grimes runs to the only exit that is still open and Jing struggles to keep him inside. Determined never to abandon his great love again, Geraldo takes Jing's position and orders her to run away. During their escape, the quartet tries to escape a brutal elimination and arrange a hiding place, however, Grimes soon manages to find them. Furious, Beth attacks the eye of the enemy, who decides to trap the group in the container so he can eat them later. In that instant, the shoal unites to pursue its prey and Quinn witnesses his friends being hunted without being able to do anything to protect them. Even knowing that the chance of survival is almost nil, the team unites to try to open the door and is eventually saved by Geraldo. Immediately, Beth goes on the attack and Switch provides cover by shooting eels at his opponents. The seagulls also decide to join the fight and dive in to attack the sharks. Geraldo and Jing, who have just got back together, work together to get out of this battle alive and continue their love story. Quinn uses the shrimp gun to eliminate the sharks, but when the ammunition runs out, the young seal is attacked by an enemy's laser. Immediately, he uses the necklace he got from Claggart to deflect the beam back at his opponent. Despite all the team's efforts, the seals are eventually surrounded and outnumbered. There is no chance of escaping from that trap, until Claggart shows up on his crew's old ship. The old man apologizes for the delay and reveals that he had to get reinforcements. Dolph the Dolphin uses hundreds of sardine cans as an arsenal to attack the sharks and makes them all run. The seals then board the ship, but Grimes has not yet given up his revenge. The demented one takes a risk to try to capture Quinn and manages to grab his necklace. Seeing his friend being pulled to his death, all the seals unite to help him and the young seal manages to free himself from the clutches of the predator. As soon as it falls into the water, the ship's propellers turn Grimes into sushi and Dolph celebrates the victory. Months have passed and the group continues to protect the island, which inspires the kids to do the same when they grow up. Since the incident, the sharks have never dared to approach the site again, and those who decide to take a chance have to deal with the fury of the SEAL team. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.